Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today we're checking out a 2023 Toyota Crown in the limited trim level. So what is the Toyota Crown? It's not a SUV. It's not a sports car. It's just a sedan with huge wheels and it's a hybrid system, sort of like the Venza in a way, uh, in a Prius and pretty much a lot of the vehicles nowadays are, are shifting towards that uh, hybrid system. Now this is not a plug-in hybrid either. It's just a regular hybrid system, has big wheels, and it's a sedan similar to a Camry uh, with a hybrid system with big wheels, basically. This vehicle is sitting on a set of 225-45 Bridgestone tires wrapped around an impressive 21-inch alloy wheels with a gloss silver finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors on all four wheels. The name of this color is Supersonic Red, and it's definitely an attention getter, uh, when, especially with this contrast of gloss black here on the vehicle. Uh, just People will just walk up and say, wow, what kind of vehicle is this? But it is a really nice color. It has a metal flake in there, and uh, just very impressive on its own. So here in the front, it does have the camera system and right here you can see the camera integrated nicely in the center of the, the front of the vehicle and then right above that is the radar adaptive cruise control sensor as well uh, of course the badging is here and a lot of gloss black it's kind of enclosed here it look it's completely enclosed similar to what a like a, a electric car would look like where it's just kind of smooth there but it does have a full engine it's a hybrid system so it doesn't require cooling so you have the cooling here and at the bottom as well now it has the parking sensors integrated into the front of the vehicle and pretty impressive headlights. I show those at night. It's a multi-projector system, so it's four projectors on each side. I have a full night video showing you how nice it is, but there's other drawbacks on this vehicle at nighttime, and I show that in detail in the night video. Looking at the profile, you can really see where these 21-inch wheels kind of stand out. They're very impressive looking. Uh, it's really one of the things that make this vehicle stand out to me. Uh, is the is the wheels the size of the wheels compared to the regular sedan car is just it's a big contrast here now we saw the uh, the gloss black in the front now we also have a matte black that extends around here each around each wheel well at the base of the doors but right above that you can see there's a gloss black piece right there gloss black uh, side pillars as well and then the the glass is surrounded by a chrome strip body colored handles and upper portion of the side mirror and the roof is actually black as well uh, and it has a glass roof not a sunroof but it does have a glass roof that you can't open but it does have a shade this is what the key looks like and it's a full proximity key it does give you the ability to lock unlock and release the trunk um, and then a panic button here it's a decent horn uh, but when you lock it it has like an electronic beep so it's not like the horn beeping all the time and when you unlock it, it does have the, bit, the option to fold in the side mirrors. But as long as you have the key inside the vehicle, you can use the vehicle 100% uh, just by having the key on the outside of the door, whether it be in your pocket, in a bag, whatever. Uh, you can lock the doors by placing your hand or finger over the sensor indicated by these two little lines right here. It'll lock the door, so you can just kind of like do that or whatever when you get out. To unlock the door, there's a sensor behind the handle, so it's one of those type of systems that just unlocks the vehicle as long as the key's on the outside of the vehicle. There's also a physical key location here as well. Now typically these sensors will be on just the front doors, but on this vehicle it has it on the back as well. So you have the back, the sensors to lock the door and unlock the door here in the front and the back. Now you notice that the doors go all the way to the bottom of the vehicle. You can see that right there. And that completely encloses and keeps relatively clean this threshold area. So you can see there's a seal at the bottom kind of sealing it up. Here's the inside of the passenger side door. Now it does have uh, kind of soft touch surfaces here. It's kind of like a vinyl type material here and here. And this handle is enclosed, so you can utilize that as a pocket. And then you have a larger pocket at the bottom. The bottom of the door is hard touch. It does have the puddle uh, lights as well. And I show those in the night video. It has a little tiny sill plate, a little crown sill plate there in the, in the threshold area. Power seat here on the passenger side. It goes up, down, tilt, all that stuff, tilt the back. No lumbar adjustment though. These seats are leather. They have the smooth leather on the outside, perforations there in the center. These are heated and ventilated seats. Has a little bit of a, kind of like a brown or a gold, kind of more brown uh, piping there in the back. 
because we see more of that brown. Of course, we saw that in the door and we see it continued here as well. So it's a kind of a dark interior, but it has that brown accents. Uh, and then it has this little gold areas right here, kind of gold accents. Hard touch surfaces down here. And then you have the floorboard when the floor mat snaps in place and there's plenty of room here in the front. Lockable glove compartment, smooth plastic on the inside and apparently just things fall out. Uh, Cause it's not really angled down. It's just kind of like flat. So you have to kind of stack it up properly. And then this is this little contours looking pretty nice. And then the dash is kind of like a rubbery non-reflective uh, black surface there. Now for a sedan, it's fairly high off the ground. So the actual seats are like perfect height to get in and out. So it's just very comfortable getting out of the vehicle. Here in the front, there's lots of room as well, getting in and out. The back door swing is nice. The front door swing is nice. And you can see there's lots of room here in the back to get in and out of the vehicle. The inside of the back door, very similar styling. Soft touch here, 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 hard touch at the bottom. It does have the puddle lights as well. And then we have a larger handle and a larger pocket here at the top and then the large pocket at the bottom. Now these seats, it's basically a bench seat, but they're very contoured um, and they are heated. So you can see the heated seat control here and they have the latch system for car seats, uh, but it does have this like little plastic cover that's easy to lose. Um, and then there's the, but it is, once you get the plastic cover out of the way, it's really easy to attach the car seat there. It has cup holders, armrest, nice and soft, super duper soft there in the center. You see how contoured these seats are. There's pockets, mat pockets on the back of both front seats here, and it's all soft materials. USB charge ports and climate control vents. Large hump there in the center. Take a look at the back of the vehicle. Like I said, it has this uh, glass roof, which is black. That's a non-opening tank, sunroof basically. And then you have a um, body colored shark fin antenna here. And then the third brake light is at the base of the glass here. And then there's this black portion that kind of connects the glass here in the front to the back. Now the taillights are an LED and they extend almost all the way across the vehicle. There's a little break there where the emblem is, but the LEDs are nice and sharp and uh, and look really good. I'll show you that in a night video as well. The backup camera, there's a couple things where they actually upgraded. Um, so the backup camera is in the center. For Toyota, this is like, you know, groundbreaking to me. <laughs> Having the backup camera integrated into the design of the vehicle and higher than like, sometimes they have them tacked on down here. Integrated in the center position is fantastic. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's great. It even has a little washer and everything as well. So I'm just, Really impressed that they were able to do that uh, in the 2023 models now. <laughs> Hopefully they'll continue to do that in all their other models going forward. Okay, so the parking sensor's back here as well. To open the trunk, you can of course use the key, uh, but there's a button back here and it's kind of an odd spot and a lot of people have problems locating it. So what, what I've been doing is looking at this W and following it up to the right, um, that edge right there, that line. And then once I get my finger there, then kind of it's at the bottom of this ledge because it's not visible. And then move my finger to the left and then feeling for the button. And then I can get it without like, you know, like going like that, looking around trying to find the button. So you can see where the button is. Um, and you can see the orientation with that W. So it's kind of right in this area here and it kind of protrudes this way. It's not this way. It's not like you can push up on it. It's this way away from you. There's the backup camera and it has the crown badge back here. Limited all wheel drive. And there's where that LED light is. Uh, and it's carpeted. It's carpeted under here and there's a handle right here for lowering it. There's also an emergency release handle there as well. And these arms are covered as well. The trunk is really nice size and it is completely covered here on the top. There on the sides and on the top with the carpeting. And typically a lot of these Toyotas and, and a lot of brands don't do this. They have all this exposed metal up here but in this case this is great uh, so this is a nice plus to see 
in a Toyota. Just same thing with the backup camera being in the center position. It's just perfect. I mean, I'm really glad to see that they're making these, these uh, improvements here. Now the battery is actually located here. It's really easy to get to. Just pull that cover off and there it is. There's also a spare tire. So you can see this little plastic thing. Uh, so you can lift this up and you see it has a little hook right here. So it says hook. So we can lift this up like this and hook it here is what the intended, uh, what it's intended to do. It's just kind of a flimsy material though. It is supported by these styrofoam pieces and it does have a full diameter spare tire with tools as well. And a little bit of extra cargo space back here uh, if you wanna add some tools or whatever. There's also these elastic bands right here. So if you wanted to tie something small down to that center part, you could. You can fold the seats down and it has these latches here for that side and there for that side. And it's a 60-40 split. Now it's kind of a small opening and there's a huge uh, height difference between the cargo area and the seat area, but it does give you the ability to add to your cargo space when needed. Now one of the drawbacks here is the light. Very poor trunk lighting. <laughs> Uh, I show this in the night video. It's just absolutely ridiculous how bad the light is here in the trunk. Uh, so definitely need to upgrade that if you get this vehicle. It has a locking fuel door. And it's here on the driver's side. And it has a traditional cap, tether, and a place to hang the cap on the inside of the door right here. Now this does recommended 91 or higher, like premium fuel for, the, for this vehicle and the Hybrid Max as well. As long as you have the key inside the vehicle, starting it up, you just hold the brake just like any other vehicle, push the button, and start it up. Now, since it's a hybrid, you're not, you may not hear the engine running. So it'll just tell you that it's ready uh, to drive. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. Now you notice the floor mat hooks in place in two places, just like the passenger side. There's the accelerator, brake pedal, and a nice footrest. All comfortable right up here, lots of room. Take a look under the hood. To open the hood, there is a latch right here in the very center. Just reach in, move it to the left, and lift up. Now it's a little bit heavy, but not too bad. You can see there's where the latch is right there. Uh, now it does require a prop to hold it up, and the prop is on the underside of the hood here. And it swings down, and you put it right in here, right where that arrow is pointing. Insulation under the hood. There's insulation on the firewall. There's seals all the way around the engine compartment. Uh, there's even this soft cover here on top of the engine. And there's a lot of heat shielding there in the back around the exhaust and the intakes here in the front. And I already showed you where the battery was. That's in the back. The blind spot detection system indicator is here on the side mirror. So it illuminates when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Now it does have um, uh, presets here on the driver's side. So basically th this side is just like the other side except for it has a few more buttons. Uh, you have two presets for the driver's seat. Now they're not illuminated at night. It's kind of a spoiler for the night video, one of the issues. Um, but we do have the power windows that are one touch up and down, front and back. So you just press it like so. Same thing with the back. Just press it, it goes right on down. It goes almost all the way down. You can see it's a little sliver there. They're still uh, there and that's just in the back. They are one touch front and back. You do have the ability to power fold the side mirrors. You can put it in that center position for automatically to fold them when you lock the vehicle, or you can put it in the forward position to stop doing that. And you can adjust the side mirrors, that little joystick there. So the driver's seat has to one up the passenger almost always. So it does have the tilt to raise the seat and all that stuff uh, as far as the power seat, but it does have the two way lumbar adjustment. And like I said, these are heated and ventilated seats. To the left of the steering column, starting here at the top is to turn on and off the automatic high beams. This is to turn on the heater underneath the windshield wipers to release those in the winter time if they're frozen. Dimmer switch for the interior gauges. Cycle through odometer versus, or trip here on the screen. You can also reset the trip here as well by holding it. Release the trunk and release the fuel door here. There's also a tilt and telescoping steering column that you lock in place right here. And that lever is fairly easy to get to and easy to see. I'm sitting in the driver's seat and I'm six feet tall. I have the driver's seat all the way back and all the way down to give you an idea of the potential leg room here. Um, it's actually a little bit too far back for me. So if you're a little bit over six feet tall, you should have no problem.
driving this vehicle. The leg room's good. Uh, this area right here is fairly soft, so even if your leg happens to be resting on it, it's not a big deal. But there's lots of room here on the left side as well. And once you get the seat position, the angle of the footrest is good. Good for me anyway. Steering wheel is leather wrapped and it's fairly cushy, has a little cush to it. It's not too hard and it's not too thin, so it has a good thickness and all that stuff. It's not digging into your bones while you're gripping it. Uh, and it also is just kind of plain and regular, like as far as using it, it's not too overly busy. Uh, but the complexity is not on the steering wheel, but it is in the system. We'll get to that in a second. So here on the right side is the cruise control. So you turn it on here. Now there's actually two different modes. So this one will turn it on, the adaptive cruise control. Um, and then you can have the lane keep, ass keep assist all in one. Uh, so this one will be to turn on the regular cruise control. And then you can sit set it, resume it, that kind of thing. Set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you and you can turn on the lane keep assist independently from that. Um, now you, of course you got the cancel button. So it's fairly it's fairly easy to understand as long as you know that there's two different buttons uh, to press. Now I like this button because it's just one press, it sets the cruise control, it sets the lane keep assist all in one it's just ready to go you just get to the speed you want and you just press that button and, and it's, it's just complete 100 percent ready to go here on the left side uh we do have the phone button and they use that same button to answer or hang up i prefer a separate button for hang up but that's the way this system is and these other buttons we'll get to those in a second they correspond with the screen there's the volume uh like a toggle switch for the volume voice recognition and you notice these buttons here are separate here uh, so this mode is the audio source and this is the change through the tracks. So this is kind of like radio related and then this is drive related and then this will be your screen related. Windshield wiper controls here. It does have an automatic function, rain sensing. Turn signal but it also has your headlights and you do have a uh, DRL off position so you have automatic parking and headlights on. I'm trying to cover up the glare with this shade because there's the, there's just so much glare showing up on camera. To my eyes, I can't see it, but the camera's picking up a lot of glare, and I want you to be able to see the screen, because uh, it does have a lot of functional features, but setting it up for the first time is a little bit of a pain, and you want to make sure that you're, you know, patient with it, because it's not really that intuitive. Um, so we have the arrows. So we have the arrows here, and the back button, and the OK button. Um, and Right off the bat right now, the way it's set up now, uh, you have the dial view, digital speedometer, and it has the outside temperature, digital clock, um, and you know the power delivery to the, to the wheels, and things like this. And the odometer's here, and that's a little button that you can cycle through uh, to change the trip and the odometer, the status of the adaptive cruise control. Uh, so there's a lot of information in range to empty fuel, you know, the, the, the main, information that you'd find. Uh, but if we press left and right here on the dial, you can see that there's three kind of preset views um, that we can have. And so let's go into the settings. Because I press and hold this button in the middle to go to the settings. And you see this little, kind of, once I press and hold the button, you can see this little cursor kind of highlights left, right, or center. And this is where you can set up that particular one. So there's three presets and you set up each one independently. So you can quickly go from one to the other. Uh, but I wanna go into the settings uh, because there's, there's so many things here. Uh, you can adjust different things, the brightness and stuff. And then you have different features that you can turn on or off, toggle them on and off. Uh, and you also have vehicle settings in here as well that you can go into. Uh, but the meter settings is the one I want to show you. Press and hold OK. You can change the language, the units, the meter type, and meter style. Um, and also dial type. Okay, so let's go to the dial type since we're in the dials. Um, and then we have hybrid system, or you can choose to have the tachometer. All right. Let's go to the meter style. 
casual, smart, tough. This one's funny. It's kind of like Jeep style, tough, and then sporty. Um, so there's those different views. And then let's go down here. Now let's go back up to meter type. And then we have this view, this view, or this view. So there's so much, it's, it's like, it's like I want to show you what is here, but there's so many different views and things are going to be in different places that it's not like I can show you what it is and then you just learn what it is. Uh, you can set it up, kind of customize it. Now, when I press the OK button, we'll go back to that cursor. So the cursor goes left, right, and center. Um, and when we're, let's say we move it here to the left. We can go up and down and choose what we want here. We can go in the middle, choose what we want here. Go to the right, choose what we want here. And we could do that times three. All right, so now I have set up that way, uh, but we have three different views here. So we have one, two, and three. So it's, it's one of those things that, you know, there's a lot of features here and you have to set it up the way you want to set it up. And it's not a, it's not a system that is, uh, I can just teach you by, you know, showing you where everything is and understanding it. You have to kind of like go in and learn it and set it up and customize it because there's so many different multiple layers of customizations and then different views, different information you can put there. Um, and then of course, all these different customizations are buried in the settings, which you have to find to begin with till you can even get to that point. Uh, and then you can customize three different screens. So hopefully that has kind of give you an idea of the system. But once you set it up, once you set it up the way you want it, you don't have to go back in. And, and that's good uh, because it's not a very, intuitive system I think they could have made this a little bit better uh, but it is that's just the way it is so the center screen uh, this has some really good pluses but there's not a whole lot here because there's these icons there's the navigation there's the radio there's the phone there's the vehicle information and there's the settings now the the navigation has been reimagined. In other words, it's it requires an app on your cell phone to run the thing. So it's not really a feature of the vehicle. It's more like a feature of the app that that you have to have in order to for it to run. Um, and then the radio it does have uh, different audio sources. So we have the um, this is what's set up now, but the radio has AM FM satellite radio here and it has different album art and stuff. You can play music off like Bluetooth. Uh, you can also play music through a USB port, that kind of thing. Uh, but that's basically the, the next icon. The next icon would be your connection, so your phones. And you can have a priority system to where it's like, you know, one will be a uh, priority of the other, that kind of thing. And then this is your vehicle information, your climate, Comfort, tripper information, energy flow. Since it's a hybrid system, you can see where the energy is flowing, which is nice. Uh, vehicle alerts, which is nothing. All right, and the next one will be your settings. And then in here, uh, you can change the display. So like, say, if you want the, uh, the screen to have a dark theme, you can have that. Uh, anytime you want and I, I prefer that is you know have the dark theme and you can adjust the camera as well um, so this would be their brightness and contrast and then these are just colors to help you adjust it properly but yeah they uh, the system here is for relatively basic now it does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, Android Auto uh, but the main benefit I see of this screen is the the camera system so there's a button down here skip a little bit ahead but there's this button really easy to get to right there or when you put it in reverse or drive uh, you can press that button 
This view right here just kind of gives you a, a, a view around the vehicle. Not that useful to me, uh, but when you put it in reverse or drive, uh, you can see at the top down view here, and it uses all four cameras, stitches them together, and gives you what what appears to be a top down view. And it's pretty accurate, it does a pretty good job. This is of course the view behind the vehicle, and it's kind of widened out so you can see better. See around to the sides as well as behind you. It does have the active guidelines as well. Um, but as you're moving, what's really cool is, let's go ahead and put it in drive and we can see the front view. Uh, but we can also change the views here. So like say, you know, you can change it like that to that view uh, or the top, these lines view. You can have the automatic function on or off, which I have it on because when you slow down, it tur automatically turns the camera on when you go really, really slow. And that's really handy to me. Uh, but let's say we're just kind of, let's, let's change this view back uh, to the front view. And, and watch right here where the vehicle is, it has like a, a virtual vehicle there in the center. But as we move, what it does is it remembers what it saw in front of the vehicle. So as you move, it fills in that space under the vehicle. So you can keep an eye on lines or whatever it happens to be uh, as you drive. So you can see this part has not been seen yet, but this part has. So even the shadows uh, come with, you know, are shown below. So let's go ahead and back up. Same thing. As we back up, it shows us what was seen before it went under the vehicle. So you can kind of get an idea. This is really handy for the lines on the road, you know, like or lines on the, the driveway or parking lot or whatever. Um, and also it's just kind of neat, you know. And it does also work. Uh, let me go back and park here. Let's go to drive. And then let's go to this view right here. It even works in this view. So as we turn, like as I turn the steering wheel, even works here like that. So you can see what's theoretically under the vehicle depending on, you know, whether you're turning. So if I turn the wheel like this, it has that kind of three quarter view like that. And it makes the vehicle look transparent. Uh, so yeah, the camera system is really good. Uh, I really like the camera system. That's the best thing about this screen. Uh, all the other stuff is kind of mediocre as far as using it. Now the navigation system, once you get it set up and all that stuff and your phone's operating it, uh, then it's pretty decent. You know, it's pretty good. Uh, I would probably just use Android Auto, I guess, um, instead. But, you know, at least it does have the capability as long as you bring, you know, you have your phone uh, system <laughs> in order to connect to it and all that stuff. All right, and there is a physical little tiny kind of tack down volume knob, four-way flashers, and then your climate controls here. And it does have a three-way heated seat, three-way cooled seat as well. Front and rear defrosters. Uh, it does have an automatic function, and the temperatures are controlled there for the driver and passenger. Uh, and the, driver, the passenger side heated and cool seats are here. That's the fan speed where you want the air to blow is here, and this is the fan speed. This is actually the heated steering wheel, and it's automatic, high and low, and that's the th three different functions that it has, the steering wheel, heated steering wheel part. Now right here is where you charge your cell phone. So if I take my cell phone and put it there, like so, um, push it back, it's just kind of like standing up there, and it doesn't really charge. So it's kind of, it constantly says charging stop. So it doesn't work apparently with the case that I have. Uh, but I like the way you can, I'm assuming that this is um, gonna work in other people's phones. But I like the way you can just pull it forward like that and stop charging and it's still in that same spot. Uh, but it appears to be like magnetic or something. So it kind of pulls the phone forward like that. But even still, it still doesn't work uh, for my, in my particular case. There's two USB ports there, cup holders, has little arms, this little divider, you can take it out if you want to. And it has the shifter just like a Prius, basically. So over, hold it to go neutral, over, pull it back for drive, over, up for reverse, and then 
if you have it just in this position there and you pull it down, that would be for engine braking. So and put it in that for more engine braking. So like say if you're going downhill or something like that, uh, that will be adding to your ability to slow down when you release um, the accelerator, that kind of thing. And then park is here. There's an auto hold function. So this will hold the brake for you when you come to a complete stop until you hit the accelerator. EV mode is forcing the vehicle to drive an EV without the engine running until the battery gets low enough and then it has to run. And then traction control off, default is on, but if you need to spin tires for whatever reason, uh, you can turn off the traction control. Uh, electronic parking brake, you just lift it up to engage it. Push it down to disengage after you hold the brake to disengage it. Now it automatically engages when you put it in park, which is great. Now the drive modes here, it's basically, um, it, it starts off in a normal mode. So pushing up, we'll go into sport mode. Pushing down, normal, there's normal, and then there's eco. And, and it's kind of neat that it shows here on the screen. And uh, sport does a pretty, you know, it's more fun to drive a little bit. It's not a huge difference, but it is good. Eco, you know, if you just don't, you're not in a hurry or whatever, and you want to save like one hundredth of a percent <laughs> on fuel or energy, uh, then um, you, you can do that if you want. Okay, so this armrest, uh, it's nice and soft, very, very kind of cushy soft, and it opens up this way or this way. So depending on if the passenger needs to access something, there's a button there to open up on that side or there's a button on this side. There's a little quick access tray with a felt lining. You can take, take it out if you want or you can slide it forward and back. Uh, so let's go ahead and take it out because it does kind of get in the way. Uh, but this is nice wide open space here. It's all felt lined. I have my business cards in there so you can see the bottom. Uh, the, the felt lining is, there's like a little carpet at the bottom and then it's a thin felt on the side. But there's no light in here and it has a 12 volt power supply and USB port. And so you can't really see them hardly even during the day, uh, but it does have them in there. And there's no obvious places uh, for wires to go in and out of this compartment. I guess right in here, maybe you can try to squeeze a wire through there, but yeah, it's not really designed for wires to go in and out of this compartment. You basically put the device in there with the charging, uh, you know, with the connection there. The rear view mirror is auto dim. Uh, it's an auto dim rear view mirror. It's actually auto dimming right now because I have the shade over the light sensor, which is located here on the back right there. And then this is the home link door opener controls on the bottom. Uh, it does have the reading lights. I'll show you this in a night video. Uh, some of them, they're okay. Got the light there, light there, and then you can have it turn on with the door or not, depending on what you want. Uh, this is to the glass roof, the shade for the glass roof. We'll look at that in a second. The visor has a cloth uh, covering. It's very similar to the headliner, same color. This opens up, and when you open it up, the light turns on. So yeah, it's pretty soft, this, this visor. And it does extend out, uh, but it doesn't really, I mean, it extends out, but doesn't cover up all the windows, so like, you know where the sun's gonna be when you have it there. It's gonna be right there in that spot where it's not covering up. Okay, so this has what appears to be a panoramic sunroof, but it's not a sunroof. It's sort of like the Venza where they have a um, just a fixed glass roof. All right, so let's go ahead and open up. This shade doesn't cover 100% of the light, which is good. It covers 100%. So we have two fixed uh, pieces of glass here. And, and that's it, you get to look, you know, help out with the claustrophobia or whatever and to get some light shining in, that kind of thing. And then we can press and hold that to close it up. The visibility in the back is not bad. Uh, it has little windows back there and the pillars aren't overly wide, except for these, those are kind of wide. Um, it's more it's more visibility issues here on the front than in the sides than the back. 
it's not really an issue there back there. And also it has the parking sensors, road cross traffic alert, blind spot detection system, uh, full 360 camera system. Um, you get a lot of technology to help you drive the vehicle safely. But uh, but yeah, it's it's an interesting vehicle. Um, trying to figure out you know what the deal is with it 100% because um, it's a hybrid, but the fuel economy is uh, it's very similar to another, other sedans that are non-hybrids. Um, the roominess on the inside is similar to vehicles that are smaller. So it's it's just an interesting vehicle. You know, the, the, it's like a Camry, uh, a neat looking Camry with big wheels and hybrid uh, that the fuel economy, yeah, the, the, the acceleration is not that impressive so it's not like that you're getting exceptional fuel economy and you're not getting exceptional um performance in this particular one anyway the hybrid max is probably more fun to drive um so i'm, tr I'm trying to justify the fifty thousand dollars you know in this particular one and um so yeah it's it's interesting maybe maybe you can share your opinion on where that value is you know the value proposition what you think it is is it just the purely purely the looks is it a, a toyota thing maybe it seems like toyota's just kind of they have a level of loyalty that's the word i'm thinking of loyalty to where is because it has toyota name on it uh then it's gonna sell so you know maybe that's it maybe that they could just kind of make whatever they want and people will buy it uh, but I think it's I think it's a not interesting vehicle I'm just trying to think how it fits you know in in the market uh, but we will see how long it stays in the market the camera system is fantastic it's really good it's it's just like the ones I've seen in Lexus um, Lexus vehicles and you're able to quickly push a button and see a, like kind of surround view when you're in park you're going to see around the vehicle that's not very that's not that useful to me uh but when you put it in reverse or drive when you're going I'll go ahead and put it in reverse so you can see behind the vehicle it has a nice wide view you can see the top down and it's accurate but when you drive when you move it actually fills in uh it fills in the the space under the underneath the vehicle so that helps out sometimes when you're lining yourself up or you know just it's not like a necessity, but it's just one of those nice to have things, you know? Uh, also, you can have this view right here where it, it's like showing uh, like a three quarter angle, like you're, there's like a drone following you or whatever, and you can kind of see what's underneath the vehicle as you're going forward. It's pretty neat. But, um, but what I do is I have it set to where it's automatically turning on when I slow down. As I'm driving and I slow down, it'll automatically turn that camera on. And I love that feature. I wish more manufacturers would do that. I would have the navigation map up right now so you can see what it looks like, but it has been reimagined. In other words, you have to sign in and have an app on your phone and log in and sign in, have all your details in there in order to activate it and subscribe to it. So I don't have it up there because <laughs> I, I don't own this vehicle. <laughs> um, and even if I did, like, I don't know if I'd want to do all that stuff just to have the navigation. I'd probably be resort to like Android Auto or something. So like imagine if this camera, imagine if you like, oh well the camera, the backup camera has been reimagined so therefore you have to log in and um, subscribe to the backup camera, you know. It's like if it's a feature of the vehicle, it should be a feature of the vehicle, you know. It shouldn't be a, a, a something that they're withholding until you subscribe to it.
So with the, the regular hybrid, so this is the regular hybrid, it's not the hybrid max. So you get that CVT, it's actually eCVT, but it, you get that CVT experience where um, there's no shifting or anything like that, which I'm glad there's no fake shifting, but it, it kind of holds the RPMs on the engine up as you drive and, you know, gives you moderate acceleration. Uh, the, the sport mode, not a huge difference, a little tiny bit better. But uh, as far as just driving this vehicle, if you really want a faster, more fun uh, acceleration and all that stuff, just get the Hybrid Max. You know, th this this vehicle is for fuel economy. Even though you're getting 40, like you're getting around 40 miles per gallon, which is similar to what I get on the Honda Accord uh, daily driver. You know, Honda Accord non-hybrid gets about 40. So it's in that similar range um, as a regular sedan with smaller wheels and similar type of room. Um, so I'm not sure what they're going for here, you know, adding all the complexity and the battery and all that stuff in order to have a hybrid system um, and get the same fuel economy. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but it does look good, you know, it looks good with the big wheels and all that. And just like all Toyotas, Lexuses, they, or Lexi, or however you want to say it, uh, they are loud. You know, they have engine noise and stuff like that. As far as the drivetrain. Now this particular vehicle, as far as the outside noise and road noise, is pretty good. Uh, but the engine, of course, has to drown. You know, has to have that loud noise in, in the background for some reason. Um, so they can't get it quieter. Apparently they can't get it a, like a quiet engine or whatever. But as far as just kind of cruising like this, you don't really hear the engine. Very little road noise, a little bit, little tiny bit of wind noise. Uh, and the lane keep assist works really good. It has the adaptive cruise control, which is a little bit too close for me. I have to keep it at the furthest distance. Uh, but it does work well. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a hybrid system. But now this is not as even though it has the uh, the Prius shifter, everything else is kind of normal as far as like a, like a regular vehicle. It's not like a kind of weird where it has a different type of look or whatever. Like the you know some of the Priuses are just they they intentionally make them look weird or different. This one has a normal look, just like you'd drive any other Toyota for the most part. Steering wheel is a little different, but um, yeah, you have a similar driving experience. And the, the, the lane keep assist system, sometimes it'll fight with you. And so it's not 100%. It's not like... But usually, it'll be fine. There's Occasionally, it'll kind of like jerk the wheel or fight with you sometimes. But most of the time, it's fine. So it's not like, you know, some vehicles are constantly fighting with you, which is not good. Or they're just not following the lines very good. Um, and then, so this one is actually pretty good. It's just a couple times here and there I've had some issues with it. But yeah, the seat comfort's good. I hadn't had any problem with the seat comfort and the overall ride quality. It does a decent job of, you know, not making the passengers, you know, car sick or whatever, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's just a interesting take on a sedan with the larger tires i guess it's kind of like they're going for like a compact suv height off the ground in some ways and then but it's a sedan at the same time and then of course they you know throw in the hybrid system as well Now since it has kind of a little bit of a tiny bit of a, a loose uh, like like floaty suspension to get that nice smooth ride uh, it does kind of lift up and, and you know move a little bit and it does have the auto leveling headlights so if you really floor it it kind of lifts up the front end just a little bit uh, and it uh, accommodates for that when you're you're driving at night not sure what all this is about you know, all this center chunk in the middle of the vehicle. I'm not sure what that else is all about. I know that it has the drivetrain for the all-wheel drive system, but a lot of stuff, go, a lot of bulk and not much usability. You know, I've had the, you know, I don't know. It seems like this could be a 
done a little bit better here in the middle and also at night time you know there's some there's some areas that need some significant improvement the trunk area there's no pocket lights you know the compartments you just can't see anything um, you know so here and there it's like you know just I get I guess this is the limited trim so this isn't like the the, the top dog or whatever but still you know it's uh, there could there could be some uh, better refinement apparently that person in front of me is not paying attention um, but yeah it's it's it could be refined better but overall if you like the way it looks and you like the height off the ground and you're okay with the fuel economy uh, then you have two decisions one is to get the regular hybrid or the hybrid max so if you want the better fuel economy get the hybrid if you want the performance and and exhilarating driving experience uh, then get the hybrid max you know of course you're gonna get hit on the you're gonna have lower fuel economy uh, you're gonna you're gonna spend more money on it and uh, so yeah it's one of those vehicles that's kind of in that in this gray zone where it's hard to imagine this one will be like one of the Toyota staples you know like the Camry and the Highlander and you know the, the you know the, like the main vehicles that people buy uh, it's kind of like this kind of side thing sort of like the Venza kind of reminds me of the Venza uh, in a way um, but you know maybe I'm wrong maybe this is gonna take off and this will be like one of the best sellers of Toyota uh, it's definitely interesting and unique and I was very much looking forward to checking it out uh, I was just kind of surprised the way it looks it looks like a more performance type vehicle <laughs> with the big wheels and all that stuff so uh, I haven't had a chance to drive the max the hybrid max and that's probably closer to the experience that I originally in, thought it was gonna be um, but you know it's a little it's a little different yeah, because this is just a regular hybrid you know uh, just like it's like if you were to get like a hybrid Camry or something uh, something like that with big wheels cruise along on the highway going 65 uh, it's basically just as comfortable as driving at lower speeds, 55 or whatever, 45. A um, little bit more road noise. Now, it, it depends on the road surface. You know, like some roads are rougher or smoother, that kind of thing. But I uh, see hear a little bit of road noise, a little tiny bit of wind noise. Um, but it's still easy to drive. And... The engine is going to cycle now it's showing that the front is front wheels are on the power uh, levels there it's just primarily the front wheels now uh, sometimes when you're accelerating it'll show all wheels uh, with the power delivering to them but right now on the, at this high speed it's just showing the front wheels the Toyota Crowns are hybrids but there's two separate hybrids that are available the hybrid and hybrid max the hybrid is in the XLE and limited and the hybrid max is in the platinum uh, the hybrid max is way more powerful has more torque uh, just a more fun to drive vehicle the regular hybrid is just kind of like a Prius it's not a super fun to drive it does get decent gas mileage you know about 40 miles per gallon uh, but you know with a what you're going to experience is like a CVT type experience with an engine that turns on and off, um, similar to what you would find in a Toyota Prius. Now, it is fuel efficient and it's fast enough. It's not like it's you know super slow or anything, but you know if you want the more fun experience, I would go with the Hybrid Max. Uh, now, the Hybrid Max is 340 uh, horsepower, and the regular Hybrid is 236 horsepower. Um, and then you have a, and the regular hybrid is a 2.5 liter uh, four cylinder engine, and the hybrid max is a 2.4 liter with a turbocharger. 
the regular hybrid has 163 pound feet of torque and the hybrid max has 332 pound feet of torque that's where the biggest difference is it's a very impressive difference uh, with a 0 to 60 on the regular hybrid 7.6 seconds hybrid max 5.7 seconds now you will need to use premium fuel on both of them on the hybrid max you will get a significant hit on the fuel economy so you get like a maximum of 32 on the regular hybrid you get a maximum of 42. now both the hybrid and hybrid max are, are all-wheel drive systems uh, but the transmission is quite a bit differently different on the regular hybrid it's an ecvt so it's an electronically controlled variable transmission continuously variable transmission but the hybrid max is a regular six-speed automatic transmission so you get more of a uh, kind of traditional feel with the six-speed automatic transmission and that additional torque and horsepower is going to just deliver it um you know just in a more impressive way i guess 